Hi, I'm Sherry, and I am making this video because a lot of people um, wanted my sourdough starter that um, I received from Laura Valenti. Um, I met her through the Weston A. Price Foundation. The Weston A. Price Foundation promotes um, traditional healthy eating, and of course, sourdough fits in that category. Um, Laura happens to live near me and is a uh, chapter leader. Um, if you don't know about the Weston A. Price Foundation, I suggest you look it up. It's an amazing foundation, and they have a podcast called Wise, Wise Traditions that I really like. All right, so um, first of all, I'm not an expert. This is kind of just me having some amazing starter, so I'm pretty you know, stoked about that. Um, I, uh, this is, I, I live in a fixer upper house, so <laughs> keep that in mind. I also have 10 dogs, please don't ask. Um, <laughs> so you, you might see uh, them appearing in the video. Um, I'm also going to be shooting this in different segments because I want to, first of all, show you uh, what your starter will look like when it comes to you, what healthy starter should look like. Um, I'll, I'll make some bread tomorrow morning and show you what that process looks like. And then <laughs> one of the dogs is scratching. And then um, maybe I'll also show you some dogs. <laughs> All right, so first, what healthy starter looks like. I keep my starter in a glass jar. I like to keep my starter in a glass jar because bubbles make me happy. Bubbles mean that you have a healthy starter. I also like to have a wide mouth jar that I can fit a measuring thing into, so I choose a wide jar. So I want to, hold on, Jack. So here's some healthy starter. See how it's nice and bubbly, okay? That is your goal when you get my starter is to have starter that looks like that. So I will show you how to make that happen by um, going through the process. All right, um, I guess I'll catch you in the next segment. Okay, so next I wanna show you how to, um, how to store your um, sourdough starter. So um, I've tried a couple different things. You'll see I have a cold stone counter. Um, this is what I'm stuck with for now. It's actually not terrible. Um, so it's too cold though for sourdough starter to um, mature quickly. And then I put it like, um, like on the pellet stove, which is right there. And then I realized that the very best way, oh, there's two of the doggies, but the very best way to store it so far has been above the pellet stove. So you'll see that there's a basket above the pellet stove, and that is where um, my babies hang out now. So let's go. All right, so um, I am going to go ahead and uh, get one of these ready for y'all. I think I heard somewhere that you're not supposed to use metal spoons. I always have worked out fine. Um, so I'm going to just throw about mm, two tablespoons of my starter in here. This is how I share it. And then, of course, I'm going to feed it before I share it. So I'm going to add in some flour. This is just regular organic, um, all purpose flour. I, I usually don't measure. Actually, I never measure. And then just add some water. This is just water from my faucet because I have, I live above a beautiful aquifer. And um, yeah. All right, for me, this is a tiny bit too thin. I like it a little bit thicker, um, more like um, brownie batter. So let me add a little more flour to it. And that's it. So, when you get your sourdough starter from me, it might look flat. There might be no holes in it. Um, the very first thing you're going to do when you get it is you're going to feed it. You're going to give it some flour. You saw I didn't measure it. It's around a third of a cup and some water. Now, um, if after a day you don't see bubbles, you're going to do what they call discarding. So, it might look like this when you get it all flat, no bubbles. So after, so again, you're gonna put water and flour in it and have it nice and thick like that and then leave it for a day. 
if you still don't see bubbles, because your, your bacteria in your house is going to be different than mine. So it might take it a little bit to wake up. When I brought it to my parents in Florida, it had traveled, and then um, it took like five days to wake up in their environment. So it might take like five days. So basically each day that you're trying to wake it up, um, you are going to discard all but about two tablespoons of it, okay? And then you're going to do exactly what I did just then. Now, that discard, you don't have to throw that away. You can um, collect it and put it in the fridge because it might take like five days. And, um, and then there's so many discard recipes on YouTube that you'll easily be able to use it. Um, so again, let me just show you how to throw this stuff in. Um, again, I'm just sharing it with you. So I'm going to grab a couple tablespoons. Uh, even though this isn't a yeast bottle, this has no yeast in it. This is only 100-year-old starter, 100 plus. Oh, by the way, um, lots of people name their starters. Mine is named Dottie. I chose a name that was popular about 100 years ago. Um, and we had a very, it was Dorothy. She was like number 12 on the list. And we had a very special Aunt Dorothy, um, Aunt Dottie in our lives who became like a secret admirer for my son. It was his great aunt. She was my great aunt. So I guess she was his great, great aunt. Um, so here's just some flour. Again, not measuring. I'll be mailing this out tomorrow or today. And mix it up. Because again, when you get this, you're just going to put it in your own jar anyway. And remember, you want a wide mouth jar as easiest and a, a glass jar that you can see through. Um, I would never store it in plastic. Um, yeah, that would be silly. And then, um, again, I don't like how thin that is. I'm going to add a little more flour to it. Um, oops. That's just bread flour. It's not really that much different, but I just use all-purpose flour in my starter. And that's it. So again, when you get home, or when, when this gets to your house, you're just going to dump it in a whole new jar, just like I just did. Put in some flour, organic, of course, and some water. Um, if you don't have good water, you should probably get distilled or something. And then um, put it on a, on a shelf. And it'll be ready, hopefully, the next day. Um, and if it's not, you just throw away or discard quite a bit of it. Um, you can put that discard in the fridge and then um, collect it and just um, look up tons of videos. My favorite uh, place to get sourdough um, recipes, there's one YouTube channel called, I think it's called Daily Sourdough, but my favorite by far has been Farmhouse on Boone. The recipe that you're getting um, that's when I make the bread tomorrow, um, that is not from Farmhouse on Boone, but I am going to share that recipe with you, and I'm going to share with you how I've changed it up a little bit that I feel really works. Um, what I use for that recipe is a Dutch oven, so if you don't have one, um, anything that has a lid that you can put in the oven at 425 degrees and has a bit of depth. I have used a casserole dish from Corningware, worked just fine too, so it does not have to be a legit Dutch oven. All right, I'll catch you in the next segment. All right, so we are going to make some bread. This is the consistency that you want your sourdough starter. Nice and bubbly in there. And already in the bowl, I have six cups of flour and a tablespoon of salt because I am double batching this. And now so we just mix it for a minute and let it let it just combine in there. And um, this is usually when I would go ahead and feed my starter, so I'll go ahead and do that now. And I just throw in, well, I just think about what I'm going to make next. I'll probably make another two loaves tomorrow, so that's about a half a cup of flour. Add a little bit of water. And 
and stir it up. And now she's ready for hanging out by the fireplace tonight. And now we add two cups of warm water. And I always add it toward the middle where um, the beater is. And it's, it's kind of a sticky dough. And you just keep letting it go until all the flour disappears. i to find my scale. And then what I usually do is once in between, I usually take it off the beater just to make sure that, see like it didn't all mix in the middle. There's dry pieces in there. So I just take it off and just let it go again. And then I use the scale because I'm going to be dividing it into two. You know, maybe two loaves and I like it to be even. That's it. That's your prep. That's all there is to it. All I have to do is divide it now and cover it. And then I just, um, I learned from um, a YouTube video that when your house is cold, like mine is at night, that the very best way to um, let this ferment overnight is in the oven with the oven light on. The oven light gives it just enough um, heat to let it rise a little bit. I do have a bread proofing feature on my oven. Um, I haven't used that overnight yet. I'm a little nervous about that. Okay, so let's tear this. Tear, tear. Ugh. There we go. And it is 14.04 grams, so 700 grams is half. And that's it. That's all you gotta do. And then you cover it and let it sit overnight. And then I'll show you in the morning what's next. All right, it's now the next morning, and this is the method called pull and fold. You just grab your dough, pull, fold it over. Grab your dough, pull, fold it over. What you're doing is you are making uh, air pockets, those big bubbles, and you do this every one to two hours for a total of three to four times before putting it in the oven. That's it. Okay, this is, I think, my second time pulling and stretching. I'm trying to do this one-handed. No one's here to hold my camera today. So basically, you just grab, pull, and over, turn. Grab, remember you're trying to get pockets of air trapped in there. Be nice and gentle. You'll notice I put some um, flour on my fingers first so it's a little less sticky. And that's it. Let it sit for another hour. Okay, next step. Very little flour. I like to... paper, flour. I am going to do my stretch and fold one last time, but this time I'm going to pick it up. 
Again, you gotta be super gentle. You just made all of those beautiful bubbles. You want them to stay. And this time I pick it up gently. Sometimes I just make it fall out. And then you just sort of pull it until it's a nice round ball. And then you can see how much your paper. That's the next step. Now um, I'll show you the next step in just a second. Okay, my bread is rising. Um, this step is a step that I tend to not let enough time pass, so I generally um, brush this one too much. Like that one deflated, they deflated a little bit when I was messing with them, so I need to give them a little more time to poof up a little more. During that time, we have put uh, my uh, Dutch ovens in the oven. 425 to temperature. And when it gets to temperature, um, I'll show you the next step. But yeah, you want your containers, your Dutch ovens in there getting to 425 also. All right, the next step that I'm not terribly good at usually is scoring. Please don't look at my skills. I'm not the best scorer. This is not the best tool. Um, I found that sharp knife works a little better. But there's my scoring. And then we get our stuff out of the oven. Please be careful, it's 425 degrees. piece of parchment and, and don't forget to use your hot gas to put the top back on. Boom. Back in at 425. Also, I found that the third shelf up is the optimal place. For the Dutch ovens. I'll show you the next step in a few minutes. All right, the loaves have just been placed in the oven. Go ahead and set your timer for 15 minutes. No, it is not done at 15 minutes, but that's when the next step happens. Okay, next step. Very carefully, remove a lid, throw in one ice cube on the other side of the paper. So between the kettle and the paper goes one ice cube. Don't forget everything is 425 degrees, it's super hot. And then set your timer for uh, 10 minutes. See you in 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes is up. Timer off. Remove lids. Be very careful. Watch how you tilt them. Tilt them away from you. So the hot air does not hurt you. And set your timer for 10 minutes. See you at the next step. Okay, it's almost time for the big reveal. Um, 
couple last minute things. Um, if your uh, starter has separated and you have like a liquid at the top, maybe even a gray liquid, don't worry about it. Don't think about it. Just mix it in. Add more flour, add more water, and wait. So um, that's what I wanted to say. And it's been a pleasure um, sharing this uh, journey with you. I'm actually very new to it. And again, I strongly encourage the YouTube channel, uh, Farmhouse on Boone. Um, I've learned a lot from her. Um, oh, hello. Here's Ace. There's Ace. <laughs> All right, big reveal coming up. All right, time for the big reveal. As you can see, bear in my forefront there a little bit. I left mine in for about 14 minutes because I, I wanted mine a little more brown. Here is this pretty specimen. Hiya. Hot. So you see if it had been down further in the oven, it would have gotten even darker on the bottom. So that is why I put it on the third shelf of let me show you the other loaf. I'm putting together a new jar of starter. The next person on my list right now. Um, again, I'm not looking to make any money. God's been good to me and my family. I'm going to throw in enough for a cup of coffee. That's cool. Oh, this one's even prettier. Oh. Okay. Pull it on out. Mine's a little darker on the bottom, but again, I left mine in for the second time. It was 14 minutes because I really wanted that top to get dark like that and pretty. So, there's loaf one and loaf two. Now you get to meet my dogs. All right, well, uh, now you get to see my doggies. Here we go. Big boy bear. And Brave. And Jack. Jack is my son's dog, also from this litter, but he comes here for doggy daycare. There's Alvin. Not a dog. <laughs> Beautiful Kaya. Mm -hmm. She is looking for her forever home right now. And Sparky McSparkster is also looking for his forever home. And then Fluff Balls, Mr. Samson. And, and that's most of them. Um, there's still at least one more. I don't know, I lost count. Um, hope you enjoy the journey. And again, if you, um, if you have any questions, just hit me up. Uh, I'd love to share my favorite bagel recipe with you. That one's, I think, from Farmhouse on Boom. It's really fun. Easy cleanup. And I also, um, I love uh, making English muffins as well. That one, I would have to give you the link. Um, I can't remember where it came from. Anyway, uh, good luck, and let me know if you have any questions. Bye. Okay, I guess I have one more reveal I forgot about, and that is, of course, See those bubbles? That's why we do the pulling. Beautiful. <laughs> Yum.